Let us begin our celebration by standing together at the uh, entry of the candle box for the celebration of the Lord's Holy Innocence. Innocence or slaughter as infants for Christ, box wise, they follow the Lamb, who is saved forever. Glory be to you, Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the Savior. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, in celebrating the day of mercy, the fourth day of the octave. Let us join together in one voice, saying together the songs of the angels. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to the people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, we keep our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you will honor the Holy One, you will honor the Lord, you will honor the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O God, with all holy innocence, confess and proclaim on this day not only by speaking, but by dying. Grant, we pray, that the faith in you, which we confess with our lips, may also speak through our manner of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, this is the message that we have heard from Jesus Christ and proclaim to you, God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, well, we continue to walk in darkness. We lie and do not act in truth. But if we walk in the light as he is the light, then we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of his son, Jesus, cleanses us from all sin. We say we are without sin. We are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we acknowledge our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from every wrongdoing. We say we have not sinned. We make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My children, I, write, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one, who is, his, he is expiation for our sins and not for our sins only, for those of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Our souls have been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Had not the Lord been with us when men rose up against us, then would they have swallowed us alive when their fury was inflamed against us. 
Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Then would the waters have overwhelmed us? The torrent would have swept over us, over us then would have swept the raging waters. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Broken was the snare and we are freed. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as Lord, the white robed army of martyrs praise you. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Magi had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Arise, take the child and his mother flee to Egypt and stay there until I tell you, Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Joseph rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod, that what the Lord had said through the prophet might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been deceived by the Magi, he became furious. He ordered the massacre of all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity, two years old or under in accordance with the time he had ascertained from the Magi, then was uh, fulfilled what had been said uh, through Jeremiah the prophet. A voice was heard in Raham, sobbing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She would not be consoled since they were no more. The Gospel of the Lord. As I was uh, saying yesterday, it's uh, very interesting how the uh, uh, church uh, sets up its, its liturgy, uh, especially after Christmas, because uh, uh, we really, uh, after Christmas is celebrated December 25th, what is it, December 26th, we, we celebrate the martyrdom of St. Stephen, the very first martyr who was witnessing to the truth, and the truth that the world did not want to hear, especially amongst the people of Israel, and they close their ears off and stone saints even to death and then of course uh, yesterday uh, though we were celebrating holy family because it fell on a sunday but uh, traditionally the next day the second day a uh, uh, third day i mean after christmas we celebrate saint john the evangelist and he himself was boiled in oil but miraculously saved so he did not die a, a martyr's death but nonetheless was willing to give up his very life for for the truth and again now what we celebrate is a martyrdom of the most holy innocence. And tomorrow, uh, we celebrate the life of St. Tom, Thomas Becket, again, a martyr. Uh, we know him from uh, the uh, Murder in the Cathedral, uh, the famous play, Murder in the Cathedral. But what we're seeing again and again is the church trying to remind us, even though we're in the celebration of Christmas, we better remember that having to be a Christian is not just to be able to be able to say, oh, isn't this nice and cozy and a very comfortable kind of faith to have, because it does call us to go beyond just the, the nice feelings of Christmas, but also to realize that God can be also calling us to our own martyrdom as well. It isn't easy to be Catholic. It isn't easy to be Christian. And the world will want to destroy that which is the light of the world, just as St. John was talking about in the first reading today. But we know the truth. We, we do stand up for the light. We stand up for the truth. These very same truths that I'm going to be trying to teach our uh, kids this year as they're going to be prepare, uh, preparing themselves for confirmation next year. And it's going to be an uncomfortable truth because they're going to hear things that they're just not being taught in the public school, not being seen on the internet, uh, not being uh, uh, evangelized uh, in the real world. As a matter of fact, the real world is the one who declares the, the church to be in the Middle Ages and Dark Ages and out of the light. And of course, this is the problem that we have in the 21st century, isn't it? 
ups is down, down is up, black is white, white is black. But we also have to remember as we are celebrating today in the uh, celebration of the most holy uh, innocence that really the world hasn't changed too much. Here we have Herod uh, who is uh, thinking that he is not only king, lord, but also the one who's going to be able to give, uh, be the arbiter of life and death. This man was absolutely power hungry. It kind of sounds like the 21st century with so many of the rulers that we have in the world even today. Absolutely power hungry. And the moment, as a matter of fact, if you look at the history of, of King Herod, matter of fact, if you watch the History Channel, it's about the only one show that I really did like on the History Channel because it's quite accurate. This one was very accurate, the, uh, the, the uh, betrayal of Herod. But this man was, was you know, just horribly, horribly insecure about, about the power that he had in, in, uh, as being the king of Israel. Matter of fact, he was really of pagan birth. He really wasn't a, a Jew or a Hebrew according to what the, the, the Jews considered a king. And of course, throughout his entire reign, he was constantly being threatened that he'd be thrown from his throne. And he would uh, then, in, in retaliation, kill his first wife, kill his own children, because they were a threat to what he was perceiving to be uh, 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 somebody trying to take his throne. Now you understand, as we were reading uh, uh, just a few days ago, that uh, when Herod heard that the three wise men, the, the three kings, as they're making their way now up to the to the uh, uh, crib scene here, then they revealed to Herod that they came to give honor and worship to, uh, to honor the king, this new king, that, he, that, that says in the scriptures that and with Herod became disturbed and all of the Jerusalem with him. No kidding. Because the moment that Jerusalem, the people of Jerusalem heard that again there was somebody threatening Herod's power, that they knew something was not going to, this was not going to turn out well for anyone. And of course, this, of course, is fulfilled in what we are celebrating today because what is Herod's response? Go now, go into Bethlehem and kill all male children two years or younger just to make sure, just to make sure that this prophecy will not be fulfilled and that I will be very secure as being king of Israel. I'll maintain my kingship. Again, once again, a world that just doesn't understand that we are very limited in our lifetime. But it is Jesus Christ who gives life to the world. And then, of course, we know the rest of the story, don't we, ironically? Because Jesus does become King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and continues on even to the 21st century. So I do ask you, in a, in a very sincere way, especially as we are now entering into the year of grace of 2021, to start re relying on those martyrs, those individuals who are innocent, not even knowing the name of Jesus Christ, and yet laying their lives down for this, this uh, newborn king. And then, of course, having refuge to these martyrs, to these holy innocent, to pray for a world that, that is persecuting uh, those who are Christian. We remember the underground church in China, Korea, and Vietnam. Even here in the United States, being persecuted because we do stand up for the gospel of life, rejecting the lies of contraception and abortion and, and embryonic stem cell research and, and all the other things that are so much uh, causing turmoil in our society. But then nonetheless, they are fighting against the truth. We ask through their holy innocence that we too, in our daily lives, when we are being persecuted because we are Christian, because we declare ourselves Catholic, that they will be able to give us the strength by their giving up of their lives, knowing what it is to be followers of Jesus Christ all the way. So with that now in mind, let us stand together, people of God, remembering we are church, Pilgrim Church, working our way to the uh, kingdom of God here on earth. And we also pray for those uh, angels and saints who who share eternal glory with God in heaven, church triumphant, and relying also on church uh, uh, suffering. We would turn to those individuals that are in purgatory. We pray for them as well. We now turn to God our Father as a united church, as the body of Christ with our petitions. So we do want to pray for those who are persecuted, those who are hated because they declare themselves as Christians and followers of Jesus Christ, 
Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit to to give courage and and also ardor to our faith when we are questioned and, and are ridiculed for our faith, that we can endure this and also be by our testimony give light to the world that is so set in darkness. We pray to the Lord. And as we also pray for uh, those individuals who are persecuted, we pray for the persecutors themselves. In our own world, we have King Herod much, very much alive. We pray for those dictators in such uh, places as uh, China and, and Vietnam and Korea suppress the church. We also pray for our own dictators here in the United States. We in particular remember those individuals of the Obama administration. We now look also to our brothers and sisters, such as Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi and John Kerry and, and the Kennedy family in general. What an embarrassment they are to us as, as Catholics. Heavenly Father, we ask for their conversion. We, we pray for them that they will realize that they are set in darkness. As in St. John reminds us in the first reading that, that they, it's so easy to turn to Jesus Christ, admitting that they are wrong and, and to embrace the gospel of life. We pray to the Lord. And Heavenly Father, now we also present to you those who are being affected spiritually by, by their own virus, the spiritual virus that is going throughout our nation, this, this secularism, this human, human secularism that so much is bringing darkness in, into our daily lives, but at the same time realizing that the darkness will not overcome the light. Heavenly Father, we do pray for our own children, especially those that will be preparing for their confirmation, that by the prayers of the Most Holy Innocent, that they too will have the courage to be able to open their hearts to the truth and to give witness to the truth in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Now, Heavenly Father, we turn to you and pray for those individuals that are being affected by the physical virus, this coronavirus, a, a great reminder that what we do not see physically also can affect us spiritually and psychologically. We do pray for all those affected and infected that they will have the courage by the Holy Spirit to endure the cross they're carrying at this time. And yes, we for those that are that are ill, that they will return very quickly, be recovered by by your grace to return to your altar of praise with us soon. We pray to the Lord. We also want to pray for all those individuals who have suffered uh, and died because of the not only just the coronavirus, but of of uh, the various ailments that they have suffered in this world. Heavenly Father, we ask you through the prayers of most holy innocent and all the saints to gather them together to bring our loved ones to you to eternal glory and happiness in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Now we turn to you and present to you those petitions that we hold dearest to our own hearts, knowing that in the silence they scream before your throne. For all of these, we pray to the Lord. God, our Father, it is with great joy that we come together to celebrate the life of Christ and also to be reminded by those who have gone before us to witness to this truth, to witness to this light, and to realize it bears a great responsibility to call ourselves faithful Christians, faithful Catholics. Now turning to you, realizing our weaknesses, as St. John points out in today's first reading, rely upon you to give us strength to be able to endure and to overcome whatever is presented to us. Now, trusting in you, we present these petitions, those we have spoken, those that we hold in our hearts, through Jesus Christ, our mediator, our eldest brother, we also know lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit as one God forever and ever. Again, in your charity today, you remember to uh, pray for Fred uh, Geisler and the author's mass who will go to his soul.
Plus, are you more accountable to the Asian for the years of this we have received the bread we offer you? Through the years that have worked with human hands, come for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine. Through the divine and work of human hands, become our spirit. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be uh, my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to you. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our spirit. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty. Receive, O oh Lord, we pray, the offerings of your devoted servants and purify us as we faithfully serve thee your country, by which your great act, which you grant justification even to those who lack understanding. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Lord God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this long-lived mystery, though invisible in its own divine nature, it has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time. So that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call strained humanity, strained humanity back to the heavenly Father, uh, heavenly kingdom. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration in your time. Holy, holy, holy Lord, our God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the Son of all holy. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them by your people, so that they may become part of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
come forth the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks and let us worthy to eat your bread since the name of Christ to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your dear spread throughout the world, and break her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into life. And us all pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit the co heirs of eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and informed by our body teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always strengthened and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Trust not thy sins on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be saved. And as we are remembering this feast of the most holy innocent, let us say together that we may dance upon him. Behold those redeemed as with their first fruits in the holy embrace for the God and the Lamb, and who call our the Lamb.
and again in your church the day after you go to your neighbor to pray to the Lord of the Lord, but I beg for a few offers. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, the abundant salvation to the faithful as they receive your holy gifts on the feast day of the Eve to all the saints who, though still unable to confess your Son and his name, work crowned with heavenly grace on account of his birth, who lived and reigned forever and ever. Amen. I, I said in the homily, I believe in Christian to be a Catholic. Safe position to be. And I wanted to ask you to do it because, again, you go back and I, I flip Christmas movie if you want to watch it on TV. It's second. Great movie. Very well done. With Richard Burton and Peter O'Toole. Peter O'Toole, who plays uh, Texas himself. But an excellent, excellent uh, movie. And you can prepare yourself for our celebration of Mass tomorrow as we remember this great saint as well who went against the. Uh, went against the, uh, uh, the, the culture, if you like, and stayed faithful. It was a very interesting uh, story for me and for me to uh, study uh, St. Thomas Becker. And, of course, uh, he's very famous because of a great book that we all had to learn uh, in the English literature class. Do you remember? The Canterbury Tales. Do you remember the Canterbury Tales? And, of course, it all starts with Chaucer as a group of pilgrims are going there to Canterbury to, to honor and also to uh, remember the life of St. Thomas Becker and their contribution. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks.